been thinking about momentum principle. And, you know, the kinds of things I like to do with the momentum principle don't really completely match with the textbook type problems. But I think that it's important enough to, to look at some of them and do some examples. And then, and then I will do some uh, examples that would be things like in the textbook, just because it usually approaches it from an F net equals MA uh, approach. And, and I think I like to call, talk about the momentum principle. I think it's a little bit better, more useful. So let me just make a couple situations and see if we can uh, work some problems here. Uh, <clears throat> so suppose you have a little, we're in space just to make things easier. We don't have to deal with friction. And, and we're way far away from objects. We don't have to deal with gravity. And, and I want to do it that way just because it will be a little bit easier for right now. So let's su suppose we're um, out in space, not in orbit, but just, there's nothing around. This, there's no gravitational forces at all. And <clears throat> I have a little model rocket that's only just one kilogram, and it has a little uh, thruster on it. It actually has thrusters on all the sides. So you can, you can fire. You can make it move around. Actually, they, they do have these uh, kinds of things they want to use in the space station, which has some issues with it. It looks just like there's no gravity, even though there is. And, and so you can go and it can move around. Okay. Um, so suppose I have this. <coughs> Say that the thrusters, F, I'll call it FT, has a magnitude of, I'm just going to say, 2 newtons. Just going to say that. Made it up. Okay. So suppose it's sitting here uh, at rest so that V1 uh, equals uh, 0 x hat plus 0 y hat. And now this little robot fires its rocket. So it has a thrust. Um, so a force this way, FT. And let's call this the x, y direction. And let's say it does this for um, two seconds. I just completely making up stuff. I didn't want to use all ones, so I picked a two. But I used a two up there too, so oh well. OK. so. <clears throat> Let's find out how fast it's going after two seconds, and then we'll find out where it is, and then we'll do we'll do something else. So the momentum principle says this: F net is the change in momentum over the change in time. Okay, so I know F net in this case is going to be just the thrust, which is going to be um, it's pushing that way. So two x hat newtons. You really need units. And the change momentum, I know the initial momentum, and I want to find the final momentum. So I can write this as 2 newtons x hat equals <coughs> the final momentum mv2 minus mv1. all over the change in time. Remember, change momentum is always final minus initial. That's how we find the change. And there's my net force. I should have left it at FT, but I didn't. And momentum is mass and velocity. So I want to solve for v, V2. So let's first multiply by delta T. Um, let me just write FT, F thrust. That way I can do it first just as a, uh, <coughs> without putting any numbers in. So I get FT times delta t equals mv2 minus m0 vector. because And I can do it in this case, because the initial velocity was 0, so that's a 0 vector. If I take mv minus a 0 vector, mv2 minus a 0 vector, I still get mv2. So now I can solve for v2. You have to be careful when you're doing dealing with vector equations. You can multiply vectors by scalars. You can add vectors together. You can divide is the same as multiply. Okay, <clears throat> but I can't divide by a vector. You can't do that. It's not. It doesn't follow the same rules. So, but if I divide both sides by m, I get v2 equals f t delta t over m. Now. I can change this to a scalar equation by just looking at the x components. The x component of this should be equal to the x component of that. So I have v2x equals 
FTX delta T over M. And now I can, I can find out what those things are. I had two newtons, two seconds, over one kilogram. And so that's going to be uh, four newton seconds per kilogram, which is four meters per second. Because one newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. <clears throat> so multiply by seconds, I get meters per second times kilogram. I divide by kilograms, I get meters per second. So after I fire this thruster for one, for two seconds, the uh, rocket robot thing is moving four meters per second. The, the problem would be exactly the same if it was already moving at two meters per second. I would have found the change in velocity is four meters per second, so it'd actually be moving six meters per second. Okay, now, if it started at x equals zero, it started at the origin, can I find out where it is after that time? Now here, I can use the following idea. I can say v average in the x direction, we only have x direction here, is delta x over delta t. <coughs> That's true if my velocity is changing at a constant rate, meaning I have constant forces, then that's true. Or if the, if the velocity is constant. Or if I, I can approximate it if the time interval is really small. So it is true here. I can use that. So the average velocity in this case is just going to be 4 meters per second plus 0 meters per second over 2. 2 meters per second. And then I have x final x2 minus x1 over delta t. So that's 0. So x2, you probably can't see that. I'm not sure where my camera is. I'm going to erase this. So I get x2 is equal to 2 meters per second times delta t of 2 seconds. So that's going to be 4 meters. So it, it started at x equals 0, and it ends up at 4 meters. Maybe this is a bad idea, uh, because it ends up at 4 meters, and its final velocity is 4 meters per second. Um, but those aren't necessarily related. So, Oh, I got a phone call. OK, so let me uh, stop there. <laughs>